Hey everyone, welcome to the Hocus Pocus online painting class. Um, if you are your first time with us, we please ask that you like our videos that you watch and that you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel that helps us keep um, these classes for free. Uh, if you are a brand new painter, you are able to do this class. Everyone always thinks, oh, there's no way I can do this. Trust me, you absolutely can. I break down every single step, including the drawings, um, so anybody can do it. A lot of the drawings, if you break them down into shapes, a lot of people can do them. If you have a hard time the first time, don't worry about it. Just, if practice makes perfect, do it over and over again until you, until you make, make it perfect. Um, a couple things I want to go over before we start um, is that if you are a painter, a lot of, or brand new to painting, a lot of people get very, very nervous at first. They panic thinking they can't do it. Always remember that painting is supposed to be a lot of fun. You're supposed to enjoy it. You're supposed to relax. You're not supposed to get anxious. If you're anxious, take a deep breath and just think, even if it comes out really bad, the nice thing about working on slate or canvas or even wood, you can paint right over it. Don't worry about it. Paint, paint over it with a couple thing, couple layers of white and it is brand new again and you can try again. So never just throw away your canvas or anything like that. Um, also, one of the biggest mistakes a lot of people have is they paint with too much paint. I've, there's a saying out there that said that is paint with no paint. It is a lot easier to add paint to your canvas than to take the paint off. And since we're working with acrylic, acrylic dries very quickly. So if you leave a glob on there and you go to take it back off, it could pull up the paint underneath. So always keep that in mind. Plus, if you're working with a bigger area and you want to continue to paint without waiting a long period of time in between drying times, the thinner the paint level, the better because it will dry quicker. And then once you're done with one side of your painting, you can continue to go on to the next step instead of waiting. If you do make that mistake, because I make it all the time, do not worry. Just instead of pulling pulling all of it off, if you can't, especially if it's started to dry and you don't wanna pull up the paint underneath, uh, put your painting underneath a fan, let it sit for a long period of time, or even hair dryers work the, one of the best. Um, so those are the couple things that um, are a couple tips on how to how to do this. Um, another thing is when it comes to any paintings, a lot of people always want to paint the closest thing to us first because it's the finer detail. You definitely don't want to do that in painting. When it comes to painting, you kind of have to train your brain to paint the farthest thing away forward. So if like for this painting, the farthest thing away is the moon. So that's the first thing that we're going to paint. And then it would be um, Winifred Sanderson and then it, it would be the two sisters. So you just want to look at your painting or looking at your picture and looking at say okay well where's which is first or which is farthest away so I could paint that first. Um, so other than that I think we should be able to start. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to draw an outline. For, for shape, for a slate I'm going to be using chalk um, because if I use pencil I won't be able to see it. If you are using canvas, use a pencil, but don't push down really hard, where if you do make a mistake, it's a lot harder to erase. So try to do lightly. Another thing that I always like to tell people, especially when you're sketching, don't do one straight line or, or one hard line. A lot of times when I'm drawing like specifically a circle, I will start doing this with my pencil. And you'll see that the more you do that, the more, accurate your shape will be. If you actually just take your pencil and you do this, you'll have a, a harder time of getting that perfect circle. But if you go around and you do the, the sketchy lines, then it will come out, it will come out more how, how you hope it would be. So that's another, another thing. And then like I said, you could always erase it with a chalk or pencil if it doesn't come out right. Um, a lot of times, and I apologize ahead of time, I spin my canvas. So if it starts to, if, if I'm spinning this to, to do it, um, I will promise I'll, I'll turn it back to the way it's supposed to be. So I am going to start with the drawing. So the first thing that we're going to do is the moon. So I'm going to draw a circle. You see, you see how I'm doing that with how it's not a perfect fluid movement. It's, it's 
Now, when I look at that, that's not a perfect circle. I see that this, so I'm going to turn it and I'm going to add it to try to make a, make a circle. If it's easier for you, you can try to find something around the house that's a, that's a perfect circle, that's close to the size that you want, and you can put that down and you can trace it. Now let me erase this so I can see it better. Okay. Okay, so that is closer to the perfect circle that I want. I'm just going to take a peek at it to make sure that it looks right. I just fix this one corner. Okay, so now it is a perfect circle of what I want. So when you when people think about drawing humans or animals or anything like that, it is sometimes to be very hard. But if you break it down where it's into shapes, it's not that hard. So if you're actually looking at the finished product, which is um, sometimes I like to take a screenshot of it and have it just so I can reference it just to see what the end will look like um, while I'm watching a video. But um, what you want to do is you want to take a peek at it. So if you're looking at um, Winifred Sanderson, you're going to look at her chest and her shoulders, and it almost looks like an upside down triangle with rounded edges for her shoulders. So that's what I'm going to do. It's, and it looks like it's perfectly centered. But if you look at her, it looks like her one shoulder is up a little bit to her right shoulder is up a little bit. So when you're doing that, pay attention to how it, so it's not perfectly straight. So since it's almost perfectly centered, I'm gonna go and I'm going to, and it's, it's not too much, and I'm just gonna curve the shoulders and come down. I think that might have been over. Okay, so now you're looking at her shoulders and arms and her waist, and then if you look at the bottom part, the other part is also a triangle. So if it makes it easier for you, draw that tip of the triangle. Like if I wanted to do this, I can do I can make that that and so or that end of your triangle, and then you can erase it. So now I'm going to do the bottom half. And if you wanted to, you could also draw the tip, and you can it would keep technically keep going. So we'll, we'll do that. So it looks like two. Actually, looks like one small candy corn and one tall candy corn. Okay, so right now, if you want, just to make it easier, you could erase this part or you can leave it because um, what, what we're going to do, at least for mine, I'm going to be doing a, um, I'm going to paint all this white since the back part of mine is, is black. And if you if you are painting, I did forget to mention this before. If you're painting on canvas, you want to paint it whatever color you want. If you want to have a dark blue, a solid dark blue, a black, a black, whatever color you want. You want to have a mix of colors in the background. Do that ahead of time. If you um, do want to have a blend of colors in the background, we do have a video explaining how to blend colors for backgrounds. It's about seven or nine minutes long, and it's on our YouTube channel. So if you are. Um, once you're done with this, now we're going to, going to look at um, the next Sanderson sister. Or, I'm sorry, we should actually do her head first. So what we're going to do is right above it, you're going to draw. I know her head is in a perfect circle, but you want to draw a perfect circle first. And you're going to do it a little bit um, above it just to also add for the neck. You want to do the perfect circle first because you want to see... Um, with her her body size is her head is is her head too big or too small having that perfect size up here that will give you the the proper proportions and then you can continue doing the rest of the detail like her neck and her hair and stuff like that so right here I actually think that's a really good proportion so now I'm going to draw her neck now technically if you want you can draw a regular neck first or you can just draw um, You can you can draw the next her her neck collars. 
So now that I draw that, I feel like her neck is a little bit too tall. So I'm going to take my, my circle and make it a little bit bigger. Or you could erase it and you can put it, um, lower it. And we're gonna lower that just a little bit. Just like that. So now we're gonna do her hair. Now if you're looking at her hair, it's almost the shape of a triangle or almost the shape of a wing. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a line down the center because she has a part in her hair. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this side and you're gonna draw that one wing. And you're gonna do that to the other side. Now try to keep it a little pr proportioned. And also remember that her one shoulder is turned, so if you wanna have one hair, hair side a little bit um, taller than the other, you can. Also, if you're having trouble with having the right sizes, a lot of times I'll use my finger as a measurement and I will um, go from the bottom to the top and I'll measure it and I'll go to the other side. And that's how I would know. And the same thing with the width on both sides. So now it's starting to look, really look like her. And just remember that when we went through this, it was all shapes how we did it at first. So now the next part is the other sister. And you, if we're looking at the picture, her, her head is a little bit lower than Winifred's. She's like the, the main witch and the, the most powerful, so she wants to be the tallest and center of everybody. So the other two are gonna be a little bit shorter. So her head um, starts where her shoulders are. So I'm going to draw a perfect circle again and have it about the same size as the other one. And like I said, if you wanna use your measurements with your fingers to make sure that their head is about the same, you can. See, mine's a little bit shorter, so we'll go a little bit taller. And then we're gonna to wanna to do her, um, her, her waist. And it looks like her waist ends up a little bit below of where her waist is. So her waist, let's say, I don't know, it's about, a, about here. So this is where her bottom waist is gonna go. Now, if you're looking at her, her uh, chest area, it almost looks like an hourglass. Um, so we can do the top where it comes down and if you want, do like almost a teardrop or that um, tr almost a triangle. And then you're gonna go by her waist and do the second part. Okay, so now that I have this, this part done, I'm going to actually work on her hair. So whether her hair is, it kind of swoops up over the top. So um, you will also want to make sure that her hair is uh, the same width as her, so it doesn't look like it's leaning towards one side or if it's, it's bigger, it looks proportionate. So you're going to look, have, go right here and look where it swoops up. And her hair is almost the size of her head. So you want to add that. And right where the top is, you want to you want to add a mark. So then you want to just have it swoop up and curve it to the side, just like that. And when I go to paint my to paint it to, to fill it in, that's when you're really going to see. It's a little hard to see with. Um, the, the chalk right now. Okay, so the next part is I'm gonna work on her bottom part so we know that everything is proportioned. So the bottom part is just coming straight out, straight down, like this. Once that is done, that's when you, we're going to work on her shoulders. Now it looks like she has shoulder pads, so we're gonna have it come up a little bit come down just like that and her arms so her arms right where the bottom is that's where her bottom part so if you want to draw a line here just to make it easier for you to draw this because this part can be a little tricky that's where you know the bottom is going to go but remember her forearm it's thicker here than it is by her wrist so where it comes out you want to have it swoop a little bit like that and you want to have it up a little bit going down to a skinnier part just like that 
now with her shoulder, you want to have it come down. And you look like there's a couple swoops here. And this might be, you might have to do this a couple times, but that's okay. And like I said, it'll be a little bit easier to see once I put, put the white part in. So if you want to fast forward to that part and then go back, you, you can do that as well. So she is done for now. We're going to go and work on Sarah. So Sarah, just like Mary, she's at the same length, same height. So if you want to take your finger and go over, that's where the top of her head is going to be. Actually, I'm sorry, it's going to be a little bit higher because of where her hair is. So it's more like here. So now we're going to draw a circle. And also, you see how Mary is close to the moon? I want to do the same thing. So I want to take her head and have it close to the moon and draw about the same size circle. And if you have to, use your finger to measure it again. So, right there to there, same size, perfect. And then we'll go, we'll go down. So you know her neck is about somewhere here. And then we wanna do her shoulders. Now her shoulders in the picture are the same height as, as Mary's. So you wanna take, again, your, your finger and you wanna go straight across and you wanna draw a line. And just like the shoulders, you wanna do a tr the triangle first. Okay. So you have your triangle. And now she's a little bit more slender and her, her um, clothes are a little bit more fitting, so she's she's not gonna have the bell bottom dress like the other two do. So we're gonna come over and we're going to draw the teardrop, just like that to get her hips, just like that. And now we're gonna go back, we're gonna look at where her dress ends up and it looks like it's going to come down and swoop to the left. And then we're gonna look here and her dress swoops to the right. So then I can erase this part, just like that. Now we're gonna work on her shoulders. So her shoulders come out a little bit over here and it turns. And her other arm comes out And, and turns. Okay. So looking at it, I feel like my proportions are right. And then I'm going to add in her hair. And her hair comes down and it covers up all this, goes down by her shoulder and comes along here. She almost looks like she has Elsa hair. Now the other thing that we want to do is we want to look at where their waists are and make sure that it's the same width away. So we're going to take our fingers and measure it here and we're going to do the same thing and measure it over here and it is pretty close. So that means that my all three of my characters, I know that she's in the center and these two are perfectly centered to, towards the sides. So now we are going to, um, now I'm going to paint my my sides. Uh, I'm, go I'm sorry, I'm going to paint the base of it. So all what I'm going to do is I do have a lot of detail here, but that's okay because we can go back over. This was almost like the practice round. So we're going to cover the moon, which is going to cover all of her, her head. And then we're going to go and paint over all of, all of her and all of Mary. Now, if you struggle to get this part done with the drawings, if you do not want to go cover everything, you do not have to, because I know sometimes you, as soon as you get it, you don't want to erase it because you're not going to be able to do it again. So if you want to, you could always go around and then you can fill it in later. The only downside to that is sometimes when you paint up against it, it looks like you, you can see it. So if you paint, let's say the moon fully and then painted her on top of it, she's going to look like she's actually in front of the moon. If you paint up to the sides and then paint her like next to it, you might see that little bit of a transition, which is okay. You can totally do it that way, but if you're having a little bit of trouble at the very end, that might have been it. If that does happen, you could always paint in a little bit 
one at that point and then um, paint again this her on the sides again so it looks like it's on top. So that will be our next step. So I'm going to pause it. I also did forget to mention if you do have canvas and you do not want to paint over it, it, it white and you didn't paint the all the whole thing black in the background, um, you do not have to do this part. You can just skip it.
Okay, so now that we have our white and, and it is fully dried, I did a couple layers of the white because I know most people are probably um, using a canvas, so I skipped that part. Um, so the next part is what we're going to do is we're almost going to be coloring in the lines and the places where the colors are supposed to go. So it's not going to be detailed or blended or anything. It's just getting the basic colors onto that spot and then you go from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work left to right. I'm going to work from top down. So I'm going to kind of work this way just because I know me how I always stick my hand in it. And then I, I start tapping other places on the hand, not realizing it and the paint goes everywhere. So you could do it any way you want. That's just the way I do it because I've gotten frustrated so many times and tired of messing up my my draw, my painting that way. So I'm going to start doing doing that way, doing it that way. So I'm going to pour a little of my purple and I'm going to work on Mary's hair. Okay. So I am just going to be doing straight purple. And I'm just pretty much, like I said, going to be coloring in the lines. And that's another way for me to see how much the white is going to come through um, because usually um, when you are painting you do need at least you do need at least two coats of paint so I always try to do like the basic color underneath first and then the second layer is going to be my blending and that way you're not doing the work twice and blending twice because that that could end up being a lot of work so instead of doing that, just do the basic color first and then and then the blend after. And like I said before, this is everything that I am teaching you is not the one way of painting. It's not my way or the highway. This is just things I've learned over the years while painting and I've learned what's easier for me. That doesn't mean it's gonna be easier for you. So if you're doing this and you're like, man, this is, I, it just does not work with me, I don't like it, that's perfectly fine. If you would just wanna use my techniques and try them and then create your own, that's the beauty of artwork. It's making things your own. So don't feel bad that your, you know, my way is not working for you because it, my way will not work for everybody. So now I'm just going to pour a little of the orange and I'm going to pour a little of the red. That paint was not mixed. So I'm going to pour that in a different spot. Now orange is another one that you might actually need two coats first because it's just very see-through or at least maybe this brand but I feel like the orange and yellow are the most see-through colors that I tend to work with. This part I feel like is a little fun because it's it almost kind of brings your painting to life without having to do all of this um, all of the blending and it just kind of makes it look like wow okay it doesn't look so bad or it looks absolutely terrible and I need to change here and change there and you at least you figure out that you don't like the proportions right at this stage before you go when you do all the work on blending.
just going to use my bigger brush to do... Mm, I think I'm actually going to skip the bottom so I don't stick my hand in it by accident. So for mine, I do have to go over um, and draw Winifred's head again just because I did go over that before. I can kind of see a little bit where her shoulders are, but not so much her head. So I'm going to put some green down. And before I do her hair, I might actually wait until this is fully dry so I don't stick my hands in it. Because it has happened so many times. So now I'm waiting for that. I think I might take the orange and red because I have a little bit left and I'm, I'm probably just going to color this in while I wait for that to dry. Remember to keep your, um, your paint as thin as possible on your canvas because that will get it to dry a lot quicker. Looking at this, I'm actually getting a little happy because Mary really looks like the way I would like her to look, so I'm really happy with the way she's coming out. Okay, so now I'm going to take my little paintbrush and a lot of these little paintbrushes, if you get the ones in the store, after you use them about once or twice, I start noticing that they always fray and they have one piece of, um, one, one piece of hair sticking out and that always goes exactly where you don't want it to. It happens almost every time. So 
one of the best things to use, you can actually get this on uh, Amazon. It's probably maybe a couple dollars. I don't remember how long it's been so long since I bought it. We can get a pack of 100. These are a disposable eyeliner paintbrushes and you use them once and throw it right in the garbage and it's a pack of 100 and they're brand new each time you use it and it just there's nothing else better than using a brand new paintbrush when you're painting so these are great to use and they're extremely cheap so i believe you can get them on amazon i think it's a pack of 100 maybe it's five or seven dollars maybe at most um so now i'm going to take a little bit of a green and i'm going to work on her neck. So I'm going to have it, I'm going to go right in the middle. I'm going to have it curve up. Now yours probably is already done because you might have done this at the very beginning, but just in case you didn't, I'm doing this one more time. So it's almost like having a side, a uh, sideways candy cane. Okay, so now that is done. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm going to work on her her head. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this again with my little paintbrush and do what we did at the very beginning. I'm gonna draw a circle and then I'm gonna draw the wings to make so her her head is perfectly symmetrical. Oop, and I just broke my paintbrush. I think it comes in a pack of a hundred. orange because it is light and just in case I mess up I can go over it with white fairly easily so I'm just going to get an idea of where I'm going it's gonna go right there Use my little bit bigger paintbrush and fill it in. And right now I'm getting a little bit of my old paint on there. It's perfectly fine because there's gonna be darker stuff in her hair, so we could fix it later. Okay, so let's measure that real quick. Should go a little bit wider on her hair. Okay, so now that I did that, I'm gonna take my little paintbrush again and I'm gonna do the wings. I wanna have, I'm gonna look up the middle. I'm probably gonna have it come to about here and probably about here. Now 
And it's funny looking at this, it almost looks like she has bat ears. And like I said, if it's too big or too much, you could always go over again with the white with the paint, um, which I might end up doing. This is, it might be a little bit bigger. Uh, a lot of times I don't know until I step back and look at it. Because sometimes when you're too close, you won't see it until after. And then you walk away and you're like, oh, that's that doesn't look good at all. Um, one way, there are a couple ways of doing it besides stepping back and looking at it. I've noticed that I see a big difference um, when I take a picture. And then I look at it in my in my phone. I started noticing a lot of mistakes on my artwork um, when I would start uh, sending pictures to my friends, and then they'd be like, "Oh, it looks good." And I would look at it again, and in the text message, and I'll go, "Oh, wait, I forgot this," or "Oh, that doesn't look good. Let me go back." It's just another way of looking at your artwork from a different perspective. Um, my mother-in-law, who also does a lot of paintings on um, our Facebook page, she actually takes her paintings and looks up in, or she looks she she holds it up to a mirror and she looks at it through the mirror and she said that way she sees a lot of her mistakes. Um, there's a, um, there was a couple times where I was looking at my painting and there was something wrong with it. I couldn't figure out what it was. So I just hung it up on my wall and I walked past it for a couple days. And eventually I finally noticed that one of my characters in my painting, they didn't have a shadow and it was throwing the whole painting off, but it took me three days to realize what that mistake was. So even if you start noticing there's something wrong with it, but I can't figure out what it is, just hang it up on your wall, put it somewhere to the side so you walk past it every day, and eventually you're gonna see what it is, or you're gonna say, you know what, I thought it was weird, but now I'm kind of liking the way it looks, and you know, go from there. So. I feel like her hair might be a little too pointy for me, so I think I'm gonna go back and I think I'm going to shorten them and maybe put them out to the side a little bit because this looks like ears to me. Um, I actually might fix it first and then once the paint is dry, um, then I will go over it with the white. If I go over it with the white now, I might just smear it. So that looks pretty, looks pretty close to being dry. So even if it's not, let me cover it up and see what this looks like. I think that's looking a little bit closer. Maybe I shouldn't have gone out so much. I might cover this back up and then see how that looks. Oops. Okay, so I will go back and I will fix that. But see, even I make mistakes over time. It's just part of, part of learning and part of doing it. And a lot of times, like I was saying in my other videos, that um, if I decide to do a painting more than once, no matter how much I try, it never comes out looking the way it did in the first one. So every single time I do a painting, it is one of a kind because there's still something in there that's a little bit different. So now I'm gonna keep going to my next one and I'm going to do yellow for her hair. 
Actually, I have to do pink first because the pink is underneath her hair. And we're gonna add the pink color to the list of paint that does not like to cover anything up. So that's another one. I feel like a lot of the lighter colors are that way.
and I'm going to let the bottom part dry. But in the meantime, I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow and try to do some of her hair. Her hair is going to go into her shirt, but for now, while that is wet, I'm just going to leave it. And since I got most of it done, I'm going to go back and fix part of the white above Winifred's head. And I'm going to see if her head, if her hair is the size that I'm hoping for. And before I do her hair, because we have to give her texture with her hair, I have to make sure that the background is completely done because if you start doing little strokes on top of it, and then you realize that you need to make the background more white, you'll never be able to do it. You have to do the texture all over again. So definitely make sure that that is completed before you go, go um, forward. So right now I think that we've gotten a pretty good base. I think her head is the right size. I'm gonna pick this up just to make sure. Yeah, I'm happy with it. And we're gonna start blending. Now, I know this part might seem a little scary, but don't worry, it's not. So try to have a smaller paintbrush. So we're gonna start again at the very top and we're gonna make sure that below here where we're gonna put our arm is dry. So mine is very, very, very close. So I might just wait maybe less than a minute and um, we, will, we will go from there. Okay, so since now my paint is fully dry, I'm going to pull this a little bit closer so you can see how I'm doing Mary's hair. Okay. So now you want to make sure that you have enough purple and you want to make sure that you have enough white. So right now I'm going to take my purple and I'm going to put my paintbrush, actually I think I need a little bit bigger than this one. Take my purple and I'm going to do the bottom rounded part with the purple. And I'm going to go almost all the way to the top, just like that. I'm gonna fill in the center. So making sure it's still wet. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the white, just barely, and even if you want, take the white and dab it on your, um, on your palette. And I'm gonna take the white and I'm going to lightly, so you can see that the, there's the stroke marks, and I'm gonna go in the circle. So now I want a little bit more. Put her hair with the streaks in the way of her hair, in the direction I mean. But remember, you are barely touching it, almost like if you were taking a feather and you were gonna tickle somebody. And that's how you get the skinny lines. And once you start seeing it blend, that's when you need, need to have more. Oh, that's too big of a line, that's okay. sides I'm going to have it go into the middle where her hair is where her hair starts I should say oops <sighs> 
Now, if you did add too much white, don't worry, because you could always do the same thing with the purple to add more purple into it. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of purple to the center. And then when you get closer to the top, it's the same thing, except you're turning your swirl in a different direction. So. Oops. I'm putting too much paint. I have to lightly touch it. So I think this is a little too wet for me to get those white lines because underneath is blending. So I'm gonna wait that for that to dry fully and then I'll go back to it. I'm gonna add a couple more white lines to the side because you don't wanna see too much of the purple on the side. I wanna make sure that that white goes throughout her hair. So now I'm gonna take the same brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of the purple and a little bit of the white, mainly purple. And right at the bottom, you're gonna to wanna to dab it. Just like that, just to give her that bottom little, little hairs. You might have to go over that again later, but that's okay. So now the next part is we're going to work on her upper chest and her stomach. So you see how there's a lot of different shading to it. You always want to do the dark first and the white on top of it. So I'm going to take my dark red. I'm going to put a little bit and it looks like the dark red is more on the outsides. than the center. And that's because because she's rounder. So the center part is going to be a little bit more white. So we're gonna put the darker spots on the, on the sides. And to get that dark color, you might have to do two coats of it. But you also want to make sure for blending that it's wet. So if you do want this, the two coats of it to make it darker, wait for it to fully dry, and then go back and, and paint and paint over it. And with that coat, that's when you're going to want to. Um, Mine is pretty dry. That's the coat, or for the second coat, you wanna make sure that it's wet so you can blend. So now I'm gonna take a little bit of my um, white or a lighter red. Let me see if I have a little bit of a lighter red. Cause sometimes if you just put white, it will just turn it pink. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my lighter red and I'm going to go right next to that color. Okay, now it dried a little too quickly, which is okay, because that means that you're just gonna see the line in between. But once you do it again, you'll start seeing that line disappear when it's wet. You can start to see, it already kind of looks like it's 3D because it's two different ones, but you have that line because of how you did it, it the paint wasn't wet. 
So now I'm going to take a little bit of the white because it's still wet and I'm just going to draw a couple lines just like that. I'm going to do it. You can kind of see in the picture it's more to the right and it's over here. And then since it's wet, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to blend it. And if you have to, use more of that red. Make sure it's wet. You see how it's wet, how if I go from dark to light and I keep going over it, that's how you blend it. Now right here it's getting a little bit lighter because it's like a little wet underneath and it's tacky. I'm starting to pull that paint away. So I'm going to stop working on that part. I'm going to put a little bit of darkness here and I'm going to wipe off my paintbrush, adding a little bit of that white again, dabbing it. And I'm going to do the same thing again by adding a little bit of white. And that's how you blend, by keeping everything wet. And let's say it looks perfect and then you, you blend it a little bit too much, you went too far, that happens to everybody. There's a lot of times where I'm like, man, I should just quit while I was ahead. You're just gonna learn that over time. Now a little bit of the white, I am kind of curving a little bit, so it makes it look like, um, she's 3d and now we do have a little bit of a highlight on the left side in the picture so i'm just going to take a little bit of the white and go up like that and since it's still wet underneath i'm just going to fade it because i don't want it to be popping out too much and that's how you blend it now that does take time i know i did that kind of quickly but don't worry because it does take time and you'll figure it out eventually. Go over it a couple times if you need to. Um, if you don't like it, you can um, start from, from the beginning by adding just the base colors and going over it once it's fully dry. But the more practice makes perfect. Don't get frustrated. This, this is supposed to be a fun thing. So if you start getting frustrated, take a minute, walk away. Um, you know, this is, this is supposed to be fun. So now if you're ready with that, you like how that came out and you want to move on to the next step, we're going to do the same thing over here with her, with her arm. So if you're looking at the other picture, it's darker on the inside and lighter on the outside. So I'm going to put the orange and I even like the color that we have because it's a darker color because we had a little bit of the red in it from before. I'm going to take my white and I'm gonna do the same thing where I lightly do it so it has a little bit of those streaks. Just like that, so you're gonna lightly touch it. Oh, it's a little bit too much. I'm gonna wipe my, my, pen, or my uh, paintbrush off and then I'm gonna lightly blend that in. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange, not too much. And right where the line is, between the orange and where the white is, you just wanna lightly go over that over and over with your paintbrush until there is no line. Once there is no line, that's when it's gonna look like it's it's blended and it's gonna look rounded. If you see any lines in your blending, you have to go over it because that's where it doesn't look like it's um, 3D. Looks like it's two dimensional. 
And for the white, I like to keep the white as close to the, the side as possible. Because then it looks like it's it keeps going. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing on her other arm. It looks like where the white is, it's on the side and orange in the center. So I'm going to make this wet again. the whites on the side now remember with this one because the way her shoulders are there's these little curves so keep in mind oops now it's blending too much this is the way her her uh, shirt is is landing so remember where you're adding the white go back and blend that more and like I said remember you are lightly touching this I know it looks like I'm pushing down but I'm really not and add a little bit more white So I might take my little paintbrush and I might fill in a little bit of the side because I feel like my arms are a little big. So I'm just going to So that looks a little bit better. So I hope that helps with the blending. And if you understand how that works and you're okay with it, you feel comfortable, the rest of the painting is gonna be just like that. Okay. So now what I want to do, actually I'm gonna add a little bit more white to the bottom here just to give it a couple streaks. Okay, I might go back to that later because I'm not sure how I feel about that part. So I think the next part I'm gonna work on so I don't put my hand in the painting as I'm gonna work on Winifred's hair or close to it. I still have a little bit orange so I might actually go over this again and I might add the white behind her and make sure that's fully dry. I think I might need a couple more coats of that. But that's okay. So we'll work on that later. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll let that dry. So I think I might actually be working on her shoulders. Okay, so the